Have you ever seen a pattern that you adore but you don't fit into the size range? It's frustrating, isn't it? Well, today I'm going to show you how to increase the size of the Ogden Cami by True Bias. And at the end of this video, no pattern will be out of bounds for your beautiful body. Let's get started. Before we get started, my name's Claire and on this channel I share all things dressmaking. If there's something you would like to see from me, drop me a line in the comments below and I'll do my best to get on it. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red button below and the notification bell and that way you'll never miss another video. In the dressmaking industry, especially the home sewing community, to grade a pattern means to either decrease the size or increase it to make it fit a certain size of body. There are rules to follow and they can be applied whether you're grading up or down. While this video is focusing on grading up because that's what I need to do, it is also possible to grade it down below the size zero that it comes with. You're basically just doing the opposite of what I do. So when um, you're multiplying the sizes, you go down rather than up. And when you're calculating the spaces, then you will also go down rather than up. There are three ways you can grade a pattern. There is the cut and slide method, there's the pivot method, and there's the method that we'll be doing today, and that's the ruler grading. Now I've chosen the ruler grading method because that's just the one that comes easiest to me, and that's how my brain works. So that is the one that I use time and time again. I have tried the other ones, but they don't really do it for me. So I stick to ruler grading. You are, of course, welcome to try any grading process that you like. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube, so do check them out if that's what interests you. But today, I'm going to show you ruler grading. Today, I'm going to show you ruler grading, but please beware, you can only apply this method to patterns that have multiple sizes in them. If there is only one size in the pattern, you might be better doing the cut and slide method or even the pivot method. So the tools that you will need are your pattern, some tracing paper, a straight ruler, a curve ruler is useful, but if you haven't got a curve ruler, you can just eyeball it. A pen or pencil, I would recommend using a pencil. I'm going to be using a Sharpie so that you can see clearly what I'm doing. However, for accuracy, I would recommend a pencil. You'll also need pattern weights and sellotape. So let's go over to the screen grab I've created, which has the measurements of the Ogden Cami. The goal of the exercise today is to increase the size of the pattern to fit our bodies. So if you haven't done so yet, please measure your bust, your waist and your hips and make a note of these measurements as we'll need them later. We need to find the grading size difference between sizes. Here you will see the chart goes from 0 to 18 and we will increase the pattern by 5 sizes today up to a size 28. There are both actual size measurements and finish measurements here. We will concentrate on the actual measurements to keep the intended ease of the pattern. However, if you find the garment to be too baggy, you may apply the same method to the finished garment sizes. We will use the last three sizes, size 14, 16 and 18, to apply the rules to the next five sizes. If you look between those sizes, you'll see there is an increase of two inches or five centimeters. So to find further sizes, we need to continue increasing the numbers using figures. In this chart, I've worked out the sizing up to a size 28 based off the sizes 14 to 18. So you will now need to refer to the measurements you took earlier. For example, mine are 49, 46, 56. So I will be making a size 22 chest, size 26 waist. You will need to decide where your measurements sit and whether you will make one size or grade in between sizes. So let's move over to the pattern pieces. So there are five pattern pieces in the Ogden Cami. Front and back bodices, front and back facings and a strap. 
I will also show you an easier way of drafting new facings if you prefer. It is important to note that you will not need to grade any side that is cut on the fold. I'm going to use the front piece in order to grade up. I've sellotaped the edges of the paper down just so that the paper doesn't shift while we're doing the pattern. Let's choose a side to grade and measure the distance between the last two sizes. In this case, I will measure this side, which is the side seam. Excuse if you can hear the table moving about. It's quite a rickety table and it makes a bit of noise. You will need to measure about every inch or two inches down the side, focusing on areas where there's a change in the line. In this case, the line is straight and the distance from a size 16 to an 18 is half an inch it's a consistent half an inch if you're grading up to a certain size you will multiply the amount of the sizes you are increasing by half an inch so if you're grading up three sizes according to the chart above so if you were grading up three sizes and the space between the two largest sizes are half an inch then you would need to increase your line by one and a half inches. If you're grading between sizes as I am this is more difficult. You will need to work out where the bust, the waist and the hips are. I will mark the pattern as so. So my waist is about there. And I know that because I measured from under my arm down to my waist and it comes to that distance. And my bust is about here. So what I need to do now is I need to measure 1.5 inches out from the side. This ruler, this ruler is two inches wide so that's quite easy for me to do. Just line it up on the line I could use my curve ruler here, but it's easy enough to do this without the curve ruler. So it does sort of go in and out quite a bit, so it's good to do lots of measuring. You can just do small notches, but I've done quite long notches, which reduces the amount of joining I will need to do. So that's literally it for that side. So if we draw a line out to where our new line is, all the notches are adjacent to one another so it's quite easy to work out that our notch is going to be there so on the bottom of the pattern right on the far side there on the center on the center front fold line it's a zero now we won't measure along there because that is a fold line but at the bottom we will need to we will start there because because it's at that point for every size it's going to be at that point for our size now as you can see over here, it starts to go out, it starts to grade out, but only a very small amount. But you need to measure between the last two sizes in a few different places, probably about there, about there, about there. On the corner what I do and I don't know if this is right or not but it is what I do I line up all the corners and then draw a line through them like so that then tells me that my corner will need to join there somewhere on that line so it's half an inch between the last two sizes which means I, I still need to go out one and a half inches so that is where my corner will join And so if we measure these, I need to grade out six eighths of an inch here. As you get closer to the centre, you just want to gradually grade it in to meet the other grades. So as you can see here, I've just graded out from nothing and gradually gone out to meet the corner of the side seam. As a plus size person, you may wish to have this pattern longer. In that case, on this line, you would just cut this line and move it down however long you want it to be. I can do a separate tutorial on how to lengthen and shorten a pattern. If you'd like that, 
just let me know in the comments below because at the bust line I am grading out only two sizes I will only need to increase the side by one inch there so let's do that and that will go down to about my bust there Now between, say here and here, I need to blend the two sizes because the waist is a bigger increase than the bust. So what I'll do is I'll just literally grade between the two sizes there. So that gives me a little bit more of a curve than is in the pattern naturally but that's what I need so we can forget this line here because I forgot that they were different grading sizes initially we've got another corner here and you'll see the corners gradually go down so we would expect our size to be lower so let's find the line so across so across all the points of the corner, that's where the line is. So that is where I would expect it to be if we were doing that size, but it was out there. So because I'm grading out two sizes, I need to times the distance from the last two corners. So that there to there, I need to times by two to find how low my arm side will go. That would be a quarter lower than the last corner. I would expect my corner to be there. Because I've lowered, I've times the difference between the last two sizes vertically on the corner. And found out I needed to lower it by a quarter of an inch. And then moved a quarter of an inch down from where I would have expected the corner to be. So now I need to just eyeball it. As we did before, we will measure. Uh, so I'm just gonna eyeball that rather than use my curve, but you can use your curve. Now here, it's not of great consequence how wide this is, because this is the point at where your strap meets your top. So this can be as wide or short this can be as wide or thin as you require it but if we're going to follow the pattern we go through all the points as we have done previously it's quite difficult to do on this one but they seem to be going this this way so if i measure that's an inch wide so wherever I stop, it needs to be an inch wide before it goes down. Then we'll grade it up marginally. Then you grade it up as you did before. I've just eyeballed it, but you can measure it. And you could probably even just leave that where it is. It's not going to make a great deal of difference. This area is where the, the V on the pattern meets at your bust. So it just depends how high or low you want your bust line. So if you'd like more coverage, do it higher up. And if you want lower coverage, do it a bit lower down. But try and keep the same shape that is already on the pattern. Once you've completed this pattern piece, as we have done here, you must make sure to transfer all the notches and circles plus any lines created and information onto your pattern paper underneath this. You can then repeat the process for the back piece. So what you'll need to do now is transfer all these markings underneath. You can either cut out the top paper around the lines and then draw on the paper 
or you could use a wheel like I don't know if I've got one or you could use a wheel like this I'm going to use my rotary blade and just cut along the lines that I have made so there's my first pattern piece done so if you see this is the line of the largest size and this is how much I've graded out once you've got this pattern piece I would recommend that you put a piece of paper over it and trace it out and add all the lines so this will be your length and shorten line you want all this information on there all your notches your center fold and then that pattern piece is done you'll then want to do exactly the same for the back piece except you won't be you won't be grading the fold line you'll be grading this side and all of that as we did below you can then do the same for these facings however this is not how i would do the facings the way i would do the facings is on the pattern piece that i've completed so this is my final piece i would put a piece of paper a bit of tracing paper over this pattern piece and trace this line up here down there and down the side now you want to trace down the side as far down as you want the facing to go the original facing goes to about there i'd want it a couple more inches so i'd probably do it to the lengthen and shorten line and that way it will go over your bust rather than landing right on the fullest part of your bust which if it does you'll see a line across your top underneath your fashion fabric so you don't really want that and then if you see on if you see on this pattern there is a slight curve so the centre fold line comes down lower than the actual side that it's probably about half comes down about half an inch lower so you want to copy that onto the main piece so i just eyeball it this way and then do a ruler to make it straight once you've traced all that off all that top half down to the line will be your new facing some advise taking three eighths from the top edge of facings so that when you sew it using the same seam allowance as the outer pieces it will help the face and turn to the inside some however feel this isn't necessary do what you feel is right another alternative to fight another alternative to facings is to add bias binding to the garment instead i won't go into how to do this now there's lots of tutorials out there i will link one in the description box below there is a strap piece it has some grading on it so that you can grade it based on what you've learned however i would advise creating a fairly long strap and pinning it to your garment to try on before stitching down that way you will get it exactly the length you need for you to feel most confident wearing your top so i hope that tutorial was as straightforward as it can be for you it's quite an involved tutorial but once you have that skill you've got it for life and you can apply it to any pattern it is it's i call it a tutorial really it's just how i grade patterns there are a million and one ways to grade a pattern and this is how i do it if you have any questions please leave them below in the comments section and i will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible it's important that you make a twirl or a practice garment before you cut into your fashion fabric because i wouldn't like you to cut into your fashion fabric and then realise that the sizing was wrong for you. So you, as would happen when you try on any pattern, the size that you think is right for you may not be right for you. So do, 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 I can't stress it enough, do a practice run before you cut into your fashion fabric. If you'd like to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll never miss another video. So thanks for watching, until next time, bye for now.